Hey guys, it's Anne. Today we're going to take a look in on the African Nightcrawlers in the Broomy Bag Little Mammoth. And I'm going to tell you that I would not buy African Nightcrawlers if you cannot manage the problems we'll talk about today. Um, so I have a, a little bit of a fruit fly problem in here, but uh, I will get the trap out for that later. Okay, we are looking in on the African night crawlers after about three weeks. Last time I had a big problem with moisture. Looks like that has been solved. And uh, the, the worms look a little bit happier here, even though I am starting to see some gnat problems, but that will be okay. So last time we rehydrated the bin, I took out all of that really hard tortillas and stuff like that and then we gave them a really big feeding so we will see uh, how we have done there and if anybody's uh, counting this is two years for a cutting from one of my bonsai trees and it's just now starting to uh, break up uh, I also did have somebody mention something that I thought would be useful uh, from the comments to pass on to you is that some of the high-end paper towels are actually made to not break down very quickly. I'm not sure what they do uh, to them, but I think if I were to use, I don't normally buy the high-end ones, quite honestly. Must have been my husband let him go shopping on his own. Uh, but anyway, so they don't break down very easily, so I think in the future if I was to use those, I would not just wad them up and put them in. I would break them up and make sure that they were nice and wet before I put them in here. Okay, so getting on to one of the reasons why they are um, a little bit of a problem is that they are tropical worms. And as of right now, it is 67.4 degrees Fahrenheit in uh, this room. And this is actually the warmest room in the house. Most of the house stays at 63 degrees. The furnace has started kicking on. And um, unfortunately, with the furnace comes even larger problems maintaining the moisture in the bin. Um, even though, um, oh, little mycelium there, even though it might, you know, be warmer in this room, one of the problems that we do have is that it sucks the moisture out. And being in a bag system like this, quite honestly, it is a struggle to uh, keep the moisture really good. So the top here is a little bit a little bit drier, but I think it is still well within tolerances for what I want to see in here. Now, last time we fed them a bunch of uh, pumpkin pie starter. Can't remember what, I, what else it was. Um, I will put that in a picture below. But I know we fed them quite a bit. And some people did wonder if it would heat up. It did heat up a little bit, you know, where you just put your hand on the top here and you could feel the difference from one part to the next, but nothing that I would consider hot or, you know, actually hot composting. And I did check on that every couple of days uh, just to make sure because uh, I know that many of the people who watch my channel have been worm farming longer than I have. So I do listen to all of your comments and uh, try and react accordingly, uh, especially from people that have a great deal more experience than I do. So it looks like they are really doing a good job here, but I am seeing that the sides are getting a little bit drier again. And I think this is not, this must be a shop towel or something. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. So it looks like we do have uh, a decent moisture for most of the bin here. So I will stop beating myself over that beating myself up over that right now. I'm going to put the uh, ficus elastica or the rubber tree plant leaves and I'm going to tuck those in. They do take a little bit of time to get done. Somebody was asking about elephant ears or outside plants. I think honestly the ficus uh, which does have latex inside of it as a sap. Um, that's why they call it the rubber tree plant. It actually exudes uh, latex and the worms don't seem to be bothered by it at all but just in case if you're trying a new plant to feed to your worms I would just put it off to the side like this and that would ensure that if it was a problem that you would uh, not be damaging their worms and you could get them to have a safe space to go um, away from it so I'm not seeing a ton a ton of worms here I'm really hoping that the drying out of the bin 
didn't damage the population too badly, but I'm really, I'm not seeing a worm ball here at all. So that is uh, a little, I see a couple of them here, but not very many. So like I was talking about, buying a tropical worm when you live in zone five like I do, and I do keep my, wor my wormery slash the rest of my house pretty cool. The uh, general temperature in my house is about 63 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And honestly, that's not good enough for the African night crawlers. They are tropical worms and they do very poorly in temperatures um, that are below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is one of the reasons why I think if I had to do all over again and if I was talking to me three years ago, I would say don't do it. Just get more red wigglers, just get more European night crawlers because they're, they're kind of uh, high maintenance worms. It's not that they're hard to take care of, but they're hard to take care of if you don't live in the perfect environment. So one of the other things is that they are in this zippered um, bag here because they tend to run away. I live on a busy road. There's a lot of semi-traffic and I think the vibrations disturb them, which causes them to crawl out. When I first got them, they were crawling all over my living room, um, which was uncool for many reasons. It was bad for the worms because they died and it was bad for me because it was creepy and also a waste of my money. So when you're not living in an ideal environment where it has high humidity and also higher temperatures, you're going to have to find ways to mitigate the problem. So for me, what I do is I tend to, you know, I moved these guys upstairs to the living space so it wouldn't get below 65 degrees. And then also I do have seed mats that I can put in here. Um, they are waterproof and everything, so you can just kind of tuck them down the side or lay them on the top. And that will keep the worms, you know, have them a particular area where they can go that would be warm enough for them that is comfortable. Uh, another thing to do is, um, especially when the furnace kicks on around here, I can't really go three weeks without checking in on these guys like I could in the summer when it had a very high humidity. So um, now that it's winter time, I am going to have to check in on them probably every single week, pretty religiously, or otherwise they're going to dry out like they did before. So let me get these guys a little bit more bedding and a good feeding because it looks like they ate every single thing I put in here. That will make a nice base for the feeding. Okay, what they're getting here is some apples that I just threw on the grill to try and kill any bugs that may or may not have uh, been in them because they were laying on the ground. I didn't want to introduce any weird bugs to my worm bin. So some of these are pretty dehydrated. This will be probably a combination of fast food and slow food because some of them are pretty squishy. So then there's also a couple of uh, squash that didn't finish out. So they should have a good time with this. Now let me get some bedding to top it off. I put a one gallon bowl here and this particular bedding actually has the leftovers from when I harvested it the last time. And uh, so I did put some water in there to kind of get the uh, leftovers from when I harvested the bin last uh, moistened back up again. So I'll just kind of fold everything in here. But let me know your thoughts. Do you have African night crawlers and do you have to spend money and time looking after them because they're really not appropriate for your area? And are you okay with it or would you have rather not have done it? All right, guys. Well, if you want to see more about the African night crawlers, I have an entire playlist right over here. And YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.